Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Chief Sweet and today I'm gonna teach you how to set up a bearded dragon tank. Step by step, I'm gonna be inserting dirt and all that stuff. I'm gonna show you exactly how I would set up a 40 gallon tank. There are other ways, but this is how I set up all my 40 gallon tanks for my babies and for my adults. I'm gonna be using a 40 gallon uh, Thrive enclosure from PetSmart. I didn't go to PetSmart and buy it. I bought it off of uh, Facebook Marketplace. So there is that. It is an enclosed, basically like a fish tank style enclosure. They sell this at PetSmart. It's pretty cheap. It's like, I don't know, I think it's only, it's like less than $200. So if you have a front opening enclosure, any other type of enclosure, a larger enclosure, don't worry about that. Just scale up. You might need to add an extra heat lamp if you have one. Um, for a 40 gallon, usually you only need one heat lamp. But we'll get that to the video, but basically this is a guide that you can use for the 40 gallon and up. Scale it up however you want. Let's get into this, shall we? So here is the Thrive Tank I bought off of Facebook Marketplace. Now remember, you don't need a glass tank. You can use any style of tank for your bearded dragon. That includes PVC, wood, glass, whatever you like. Now, first things first, you have an empty tank. I do myself like to apply a background. This is entirely optional. You really don't have to do this, but it does help with glass surfing. It cuts down the reflections in the enclosures. And so the bearded dragons are not gonna see themselves usually. And that way they don't run up against the glass or head bob constantly. After that, I add substrate. Now this depends on yourself and many other keepers as well, but I do stay away from reptile carpet and calcium sand. My personal favorite is topsoil mixed with play sand. You can get play sand at any hardware store. As long as it's just premium play sand, it will work. I get it at Lowe's and Home Depot. And the topsoil, as long as it's organic and doesn't have any pesticides or manure in it, it's gonna be fine. The two topsoils I get is Scott's Organic Topsoil and Timberline Topsoil. I then put these in separate containers and I mix them together at a 70-30 ratio with topsoil being 70% and sand being 30%. This is also incredibly cheap because this together cost me $10. Now I really just put the percentages on there myself, but honestly I eyeball my mixture and I kind of just feel the consistency and once it kind of clumps together, that's what I'm good with. However, if you're unsure of it, a 70-30 mixture is what you should go with. After that, I just dump it into the enclosure. Now, since this is just an example video, I didn't add some other stuff I usually add on top, and this would be an Exoterra Stone Desert. I usually cover the topsoil and play sand with it, so that way it has a very nice desert on top, but underneath, they can burrow if they want. Now, how much substrate you use in the enclosure is entirely up to you, but I myself like a deep substrate of about four inches. This is what the substrate will look like when it's done. And mind you, topsoil comes different every time. So you may have a more clay-based topsoil or topsoil with a lot of wood chips in it. So it's really just the bag you get. After that, I add my rocks. Rocks are very important because they will retain heat if they're on the hot side and the beardies can scratch up against them to remove shedding skin when they shed. I also like to stack the rocks to make a hot hide on the hot side of the enclosure like you see right there. Then I add branches for them to climb on because beer dragons do love to climb. After that, I add some cork bark for hides. You don't have to use cork bark for hides. There are plenty of hides to choose from, but I love the way cork bark looks. So I use cork bark for a lot of my hides. After that, you can add a water bowl. It's up to you if you wanna add a food dish or not. A lot of times I just hand feed my beer dragons. You can add a food dish, it's entirely up to you. Last thing to add inside of the enclosure is temp gauges. One on the hot side and one on the cool side. I use command strips to secure my temp gauges into place. This is very important so that way you know you're getting the correct ambient temps. So make sure to put one on the hot side and one on the cool side. Bam, now your enclosure is done on the inside and we can move on to lighting. So this is very important. I see a lot of people get this wrong. When you put your heat lamp on the hot side of the tank, you need to put the UVB lamp right next to it. They need to be side by side on top of the hot spot. Also do not get cold UVB. That is absolutely horrible for bearded dragons. Stick to a T5 high output UVB bulb from Zoomed or Arcadia. Back to the heat lamp though, it is important to add a thermostat to the enclosure. Um, I like dimming thermostats because it doesn't just shut off the bulb. One I have been using, I'll make a review video about is the ReptiZoo one on Amazon, but any thermostat will do. Now thermostats are pretty simple. You have the probe and you can put it on the basking spot or near it. So what a thermostat does is it cuts off the heat lamp when it gets too hot. However, you do have to set it and to do this, it requires to put the probe in the correct position. What I like to do is I like to turn on my lamp for at least four hours every day for a week. 
So if the hot spot is reading 115, that's the max you want it at, and your thermostat has been reading 98 the entire time, the whole week, I set it at 98. I know it's a lot to take in. I hope that made sense. It is a little complicated sometimes, but it's kind of simple once you get the hang of it. Also a reminder, the thermometers up top are not gonna be able to read this. You need a temp gun to read this properly. Also be careful for placing it directly under the basking lamp. I don't do this because a lot of my animals like to sit directly on top of it. And since they have cold bellies, it kind of throws the whole thing off and defeats the purpose of the probe itself. Now I'm a veteran, you don't have to do this, but what I like to do is I like to tape it to the side of the rock or underneath the rock. So if the top is reading 125, this, like, this is for my your mastics, the bottom of the rock or the side of the rock is gonna read 102, and that's where I know to set the thermostat at. It does take a while to dial it in perfectly, but once you get it in perfectly, you don't really have to worry about overheating your animal. You really just have to test everything and thermostat readings to dial in, but thermostats are very important for your reptile's health and for yours so you don't burn your house down. Moving on, I do like, this is optional as well, you don't have to do this, but I like to add an LED daylight lamp on the cool side. You can also put it closer to the hot side as well, but it brightens up the cage. It makes it more of a natural daylight look. And you can use any LED daylight lamp. I get mine from Walmart for $15, it's the bar, and this one hooks directly up to my UVB Arcadia lamp. You can also do regular household daylight LED bulbs as well and use the cheap clamp lights at the hardware stores to put it on top of the enclosure. But that's it. The beer drag enclosure is ready for someone to call it home. Anyways, that's all I have today. I hope I helped. If you want to join my Discord, have any other questions, you can join the links down below. If you liked this video and enjoyed it and I did help you, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.